I'm I'm hoping it's they're calling for at least one day next week of being 61. I know the trails were dry. They were beautiful to run in yesterday. I'm getting out and doing some stuff in my on my yard. I love it. You can start doing classes outside again. That's what I'm shooting for. My goal actually is I've scheduled a class in April and I did reserve the range, but I mean this is the time of year I really start looking about lunchtime before we all split up for lunch. <laughs> Everyone goes outside and we kind of look around, we take a vote on what we want to do. So hopefully it'll become a permanent thing real real soon. We can start shooting outside every class. The only thing you got to worry about is if you got a high wind. Yeah, uh, and I do I kind of live by the canyon edge, so I do I do get a little bit of wind, but then when it's warm it's not horrible. You're not talking though on the range about that the wind's not going to cause too much havoc with people's aim. No, no, it's not going to cause havoc with age. If anything, it might knock a target over, and uh, we can always we can always fix that on the go. So you should be able to shoot in inclement weather, though. You really should be able to go out and shoot and be trained and be used to shooting in in snow and rain and wind because you never know. I mean, you could be you know packing your gun that day and and something happens. It's at night. It's you're outside. It's cold. You need to be able to uh, be able to shoot like that. Shoot in those conditions. Now, long distance. The wind, you've got to take that into account. It's like golfers when they throw up the grass to see what the wind is doing. Well, exactly. But uh, as far as self-defense with a handgun, you shouldn't get too horribly long of distances where it's going to matter. If, you know, it gets to a certain point where if you're so far away, you need to probably be looking for cover, calling 911, <laughs> and getting out of there. Yeah, Forrest Anderson joining us. And uh, uh, you've had a busy week, I'm sure. It's been crazy. Uh, and talking about golfers who throw the grass up in the air, I don't know why they do that. I think it's just for show because most of them, it doesn't matter. Once they start swinging the club, it's just going to go where it's going to go anyway. Right. So. And if you're putting, it doesn't really matter. It's when you have a long It drive. makes you feel like you have some control. Then you have an excuse when you shank it. You can <laughs> yeah. be like, ah, it's the wind. Okay, okay, occasionally on the range, that's what I'll do. I'll bend down, pick up a little bit of sand, and throw that up in the air and see which way it goes. Yep. Guys, i, I got to share something with you. I know I've got it in my pile, my colossal pile of stuff here. I'm trying to borrow from Rush Limbaugh with a phrase like that. But I... I the guy who actually was the who argued for the government and got the the, the handgun ban in Washington D.C. struck down the Heller decision uh, was Ted Cruz, the senator from Texas. So this week he was appearing on uh, Morning Joe on MS uh, DNC, as I call it, and uh, they were having a discussion because the he, they were ganging up on him. All the folks on that program saying we got to have a ban on AR-15s. I even read where somebody said, you know. The guy who invented the AR-15 never intended it for it to be used in school shootings. Duh. Yeah. No, you know, <laughs> the, you don't intend any gun to be used in school shootings. But take a listen. Uh, and he starts to mention how it's no different than a lot of other firearms and how the host changed the subject on him and to try to get him off on another topic. But, but take a listen to this and maybe you can pick it apart of an AR-15 is indistinguishable from many deer rifles. When we were having this debate in 2013, Diane Feinstein proposed her so-called assault weapons ban. I put up a picture of one of the most common deer rifles in America, owned by millions of Americans. Under the statute she introduced, that was not a, quote, assault rifle. And then I held up a 599 little plastic handle. If you attach the plastic handle to it, suddenly it was a banned assault so weapon. So your argument here is that that Deer rifles are just as lethal. If somebody the, takes the, the a deer, firing mechanism if somebody, is functionally if, if the somebody same. takes a deer rifle into a high school in uh, in in Parkland, that that deer rifle is going to be as lethal as an AR-15. So, Joe, my argument is twofold. Number one, going after the Second Amendment rights of law-abiding citizens, it doesn't work. It was actually the Bill Clinton Justice Department that concluded okay, wait, wait, that the wait, assault wait. weapons ban so had zero you statistical know impact. better than anybody, and I don't want to, I mean, we don't, we don't want to get into a sort, sort of a, a moot court, court argument here, but you know better than anyone what the Second Amendment says and what it does. I don't know does. better than anyone, but I, I know what the Second well, Amendment but, but, says. But you were involved with Heller, weren't I, you? I, I you were involved represented Heller. 31 states exactly. in, in Heller. And so you know that Amendment. at least where it stands right now, Scalia said that the Second Amendment means that people have a right to keep and bear arms in their homes. They have a right uh, to, to have handguns in their home. They have a right to have shotguns in he their home. He didn't just say in their home. <laughs> You're right. He didn't just say in their home. But also, when this went on, uh, Scarborough then started saying, but you don't, a Second Amendment doesn't mean you have a right to an AR-15. And I thought, well, it didn't say if you had a right to a musket or a cannon in the beginning either. It, it just, But it shows you the mindset we're dealing with here. What did you think? I, I think the argument there is, and we have to remember, the Second Amendment was established to 
not not to give somebody the right to hunt with a gun, not to give someone the right to have self-defense. It was the right to stand against tyranny. That's why the Second Amendment was established, so people could stand against a tyrannical government. That's why it was established. Now, a lot of people argue this. They, well, when it was established, they had muskets. They never imagined this. The muskets they protected then were the industry standard. They right. were the cutting edge of firearms in that day. Um, so I'm sure today they would intend to, to for people to be able to defend themselves with what's currently accepted as as uh, potent and uh, firearm. But you know we've we've watered that down. You know we've established that full auto, fully automatic weapons are not a are not a part of that. We've established that. You know, there's a lot of limitations to that. Short-barreled rifles, suppressors, all those things. But people, law-abiding citizens, should be able to be defend themselves with whatever's out there, whatever the best technology is out there. So the, the, the tyrannical governments that we're supposed to be able to have these firearms for, to be able to stand up against that tyrannical government, now wants to come in and take all our means of standing up against them. And the other part of this, too, is is that we're now dealing with this debate about uh, nearly a month onward, and it we're just every day we find out almost practically that it was the incompetence on the other side that could have prevented this shooting, and no one wants to address that versus firearms. We've but, talked about that repeatedly. Yeah, no, it, no one wants to have responsibility. No one, everyone wants to blame the gun. No one wants to blame the police officers who sat outside and didn't go inside. Nobody wants to blame the bureaucracy that missed the fact that the police officers had been to this kid's home 39 times, had been reported by several people, been reported to the FBI. No one took action, but now no one wants to be responsible. Now they want to blame the piece of metal and plastic that the kid was holding in his hand. It's, it's actually pretty shameful. They're taking this horrible tragedy, this, all, this loss of life, and they do this every time. They take it, and they immediately turn toward the Second Amendment. They turn toward the firearm. They never want to concentrate on the, the real problem, which was incompetency or mental health. They just, they immediately go for the, for the guns. It's, it's shameful. I saw a comment on Facebook this week, and I, I apologize uh, to the friend who, who posted it because I can't remember which one it was, but it was about the number of opioid deaths far outpaced the number of firearms deaths last year. And uh, the writer said, we've got to do something. We've got to take these opioids away. Um, which I thought was a good tongue-in-cheek response to all of this. Aren't there any laws against uh, heroin abuse, for instance? Apparently not. <laughs> They're not banning cell phones. Yeah. You know, and more kids die of distracted driving, mess on their cell phones, than they do from firearms. But that'll never be the case because the ends justify the means. All they're concerned about is limiting or doing away with the Second Amendment. And, and what that is, to some people who maybe aren't gun people are like, big deal. I don't own a gun. It doesn't make any difference. That is just the first step. I mean, our central government already has plenty of power. But then to disarm its citizens, they have absolutely nothing to fear from doing whatever they want to do. I'm not saying in five years they're going to throw up, you know, hurt everybody around and, and, and make us get passes to leave our home and things like that but it just starts it starts I, with a trickle i saw a figure uh, uh the last recorded year of the, the statistics say there were 242 firearms deaths in idaho 215 of those 242 were suicides which is about 90 percent if you do the math or somewhere in that range uh, which those people could have just as well sliced their wrists or taken a bottle of aspirin and out of the remaining 25 uh, if you look at them, they were oftentimes people who were, uh, you know, at an accident or was hunting accident. And so the, the actual number of people who are dead because of an attack from someone else, pretty slim in Idaho, for instance. It is. And, and statistically, it's pretty slim everywhere. I mean, if you look at the number of murders, in, even in Chicago, you look at that per capita, you look at that uh, as opposed to deaths from other sources, it's not number one on the list. Right. We haven't banned cars yet because of deadly accidents. Right. And and suicides, the, the, that's the left's 
they love to factor that in. But, I mean, people are going to do themselves in one way or well, the other. They'll do whatever they need to do to help bolster their numbers in their favor every every time. We, I mean, we've seen that. We've talked about that over and over and over again on the show. They do that with, with, with language. They'll call something what it's not just to use scare tactics to, to shock people and make them concerned about it all of a sudden. We have a caller with us. Coming up on 917, we're at 42. Caller, you're on the air on KLIX. Go ahead. Good morning, gentlemen. Um, I've been writing letters to all of my representatives on this exact subject. And it is my belief that the Constitution was inspired by God to do it because it, it gives everybody equal freedom. And this situation where they're doing this is just absolutely ridiculous. Why, why is it that guns are the only tool when used in a stupid act that it is blamed? If a knife is used, the guy's in a, a nutcase. If a car is used, the guy's in a nutcase. But as soon as a gun is used, the gun is at fault, and the gun cannot do nothing. It is a tool. And you cannot legislate morality, but we can enforce the laws we already have because the laws were dropped again and again and again, and we're finding out that previous administrations have created situations where if they look the other way and just scold the kid instead of reprimanding the kid, they get more money, and that's just ridiculous. And, you know, the Constitution... The First Amendment is a cornerstone of the building, and, and the Second Amendment is a keystone because it's key. If you take away the Second Amendment, that archway will fall, and the rest of the Constitution will fall with it. And just remember, it is not about gun control. They want our guns so they can control. I think that we've got a, a room full of agreement here. Yeah, it's about people control is what it is. Yeah, we have to take a short break in about 30 seconds. I do want to point out uh, Todd Eccles and Forrest Anderson joining us this morning on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Uh, Bill Colley with you as well, answering the telephones. And we're at 46. Oh, I love the sound of that. Uh, the, the weather finally making a turn toward the better. And I know these guys don't want to get into too much controversy, but there's a story today uh, out of the Times News. Uh, stand your ground bill sent to Idaho House floor. Now, there are two bills uh, that have been competing uh, for the attention of legislators. Uh, this is the one that originated in the Senate, um, and uh, our own prosecuting attorney from Twin Falls County testified yesterday on its behalf. So maybe we can touch on this a little bit in the uh, in the next uh, segment of the program, or at least before we wrap up at 10 o'clock this morning. We have a couple of guys talking in our studio today, and, and a lot of this is just really about common sense. Uh, 922, we're at 42, and uh, of course, Forrest Anderson from Washington Street Pawn, Todd Eccles from Patriot Defense, and Bill Colley answering the telephones on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Before we get into some of the meat of the uh, the program uh, on the state level today, let's uh, at least tell people how they can get in touch with you guys because um, the big part of this is the fact that we do talk about training and we talk about uh, various models of firearms that you can find. I've actually. Uh got another class scheduled i actually i have i have a big uh permit class on april 7th and uh if you're interested in that you got any questions about it i'm just now starting to get it filled up i actually haven't put it out on facebook yet but i probably will as soon as i get done here uh you can text me you can call me area code 620-794-6223 that's area code 620-794-6223 um you can find me on facebook under patriot defense uh, i'm still Working on doing those uh, those podcasts about every weekend. You can find those on Spotify, under iTunes, uh, under the Patriot Defense Podcast. Uh, like it, share it, subscribe to it. And I have uh, my teachers, my active shooter uh, class tomorrow for teachers starting at 8 o'clock. Yes, and, I understand there's a lot of people interested in that. Yeah, I think I've got a, a, between 40 and 50 people that are going to actually show up. Um, that's I've generated a lot of interest during the week. Good interest, bad interest, interest that has me scratching my head. But people are going to show up tomorrow. <laughs> Um, fantastic. If you're an educator and you're interested in that, get a hold of me, call me, text me at that number I just mentioned, and uh, we can see what we can do. It's going to be a full house, but we'll, we'll get you in. Uh, Forrest Anderson, Washington Street Pond, 321 Washington Street. Um, stop by and say hi. I've got a bunch of AR-15s coming in today. 
I hope no one overpaid and got caught in a panic. Um, there has been a shortage, and it looks like there may be some changes in those, but still our price hasn't changed. We have them for $585. We've got 20 coming in. I've pre-sold 12 of those, um, but we'll have 8 or 10 left. So stop in, and uh, we'll hook you up with that. Also, we've got that class May 12th, the day before Mother's Day. We're doing down at Shaw Shooting. We're going to put you on all the steel, on the moving target, shooting through the cars, doing all the fun stuff that we do with all the uh, world's best that are coming in. We've got some other countries sending their guys over this year, and we've got a bunch of U.S. teams coming in. So anyway, it'll be a good tune-up for them and a good chance for a regular civilian get a chance to see what the world's best get to train on. So. All right, you you got to help me out, guys, because you know more about this than I do. I'm looking for it right now, but there was a meme on Facebook the other day of a double-barreled double uh, AR, uh, and lots of people were posting this. Uh, is there a device like that that I could get my hands on? They make them. They make double barrel 1911s too. Yep. <laughs> twice the fun with a 1911. Uh, twice the trouble. They call that a 22, that's, right? With a 19 with a 1911, that's twice the trouble and twice the damage. Yeah. <laughs> the grip is the grip is gigantic on that gun. You'd have to have you'd have to be. Uh... Akeem Olajuwon have his hands. His there you go. Yeah, there. you know, or maybe a stirrup to put it in. Uh, <laughs> the uh, well, we we're, we're going to talk a little bit, and we've got a little time left this half hour, and we might expand on this. Uh, Todd pointed out that this bill uh, that has been advancing through the legislature in Boise, Senate Bill thirteen thirteen, that is SB thirteen thirteen. It was one of the two competing bills. Um, I think that we're, we've been calling them both Castle Doctrine bills. I'm not quite sure that technically that is is maybe the proper term here, uh, but here uh, in the story uh, from the reporter, I believe it was from the Times News. It was also picked up by Idaho State Journal. Uh, I've got a quote here from uh, Twin Falls County Prosecutor Grant Loeb's. Uh, he says, there is a lot of confusion about what Idaho law is, but the thing we have to be absolutely clear about is that Idaho is a stand-your-ground state. Idaho already is that. And that's from his testimony uh, at the uh, the state senate yesterday. Um, so this is really a bill that's a clarifying bill uh, versus the other one which was introduced over in the House. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see which way it goes. I know there's a lot of people who are disappointed that 444 didn't didn't get voted on and that this is what's in front of the people now. And my thing is I think we need to take a step back and look at ourselves morally. I've talked about this several times, you know. Whenever you're using a firearm to defend yourself or defend your property, you need to be smart. And you really need to weigh. You need to be ready. You need to be prepared. You need to know how to use that weapon. But as always, we I don't know if we're ready to get to a spot where we just shoot people because they're on our property. Maybe they were walking across our property. Maybe their kite blew over into our yard, whatever. I think we really need to think. I hear pe- I've heard people say the phrase, well, if I caught somebody running out of my house, I'd shoot them on the deck and I'd drag them back inside. And I'm like, what kind of world are we in? Where someone running away from us that doesn't pose a threat, we would kill them just at, at will. Where are we at morally? Is that really, maybe that's the reason why we're getting these school shootings. Because we've lost total, the, the value of human life means nothing anymore. And I really think we need to think about that when we make decisions, when we carry. Um, and just realize, if we, if you make the wrong decision with a firearm, it can cost you financially, and it can pro- maybe cost you your freedom. So think about that. Prepare yourself, know how to run your weapon, and but make good decisions when you choose to do that. And not even concerning these bills. This is just an overall thing someone, exactly what Ford said, an overall thing someone should think about doing before they decide to carry a firearm. Uh, you know, concealed for, for protection of, of self and family, whether you're at your house, whether you're at Walmart or Winco or wherever, you need to be okay with actually having to use that firearm. You need to make those decisions now, be okay with actually having to use it and possibly take a life. And, and, and think about some of the decisions that you might come across to help you control the encounter. Like, I'm going to wake up at night, he's running out of the house, do I shoot him, do I let him go, what's my legal standing, What can I? am I willing to shoot someone over the theft of a TV, or um, I'm, am, is it going to be... Till I'm going to have to wait till uh, my I'm in threat of my life or they're they're threatening my family. You have to make those mental choices and mental uh, decisions now because if you are against taking of a life to defend yourself, you may 
rethink that and actually not decide not to carry a firearm. And I wish him well with, with 444. I was doing some reading on it. Sounds like they're probably going to maybe try it again next year, and we'll see, we'll, we'll see what happens. I just, I just wanted to point out, too, that during the previous commercial break, some wise guy who wasn't named Todd or Forrest said, well, it'd have to be at least a 50-inch television screen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, the, you might even be able to find some of those, too, at uh, Washington Street Farm. You know, televisions and laptops are one thing I'm having a hard time keeping in stock. We've sold a ton of that stuff. <laughs> well, summer's coming, and the kids got to stay busy, right? <laughs> yep. we, we've got a... We've got a short break. We've got one more half hour today. Uh, top story, of course, and we're talking firearms this hour with Forrest Anderson from Washington Street Pawn and Todd Eccles from Patriot Defense. Bill Colley with you as well on Top Story this morning. Oh, oh, hold on a minute here. I got an email just came in. Uh, we'll get to this in a second. I do want to point out Todd Eccles from Patriot Defense is in studio this morning along with Forrest Anderson from Washington Street Pawn. And uh, Bill Colley as well on News Radio 1310 KLIX and uh, News Radio 1310.com. This comes from uh, Debbie. And she says, Sorry, I'm at school during the day. Maybe she's going to be at your class tomorrow. Maybe. She said, But I heard you were going to be talking about an upcoming gun show. Can you provide me with details of when and where? Not able to listen to your broadcast. But she said, I Actually, it was on our newscast this morning, too. So um, I don't know if it's anything local or not. Uh, they just had one a couple weeks ago in. I know there's one, I think, coming up in Buell, but I don't know the exact date. I don't, don't know the exact time. Maybe someone can help us out with that this morning. So uh, we'll take that call uh, at some point. Uh, but in the meantime, I know that as we were going to break, Forrest had something he wanted to add as well this morning. Oh, I just wanted to talk more about the, uh, you know, the security of our schools. We touched base on it last week, how our state legislatures make sure that there is plenty of money in the budget to keep them safe and secure. They have... And they're grown people. They are grown adults who could defend themselves if the situation arose that they needed to defend themselves. But they, there's plenty of security and police up there to defend them. But yet our children go to school. Many of these districts don't have resource officers or have part-time resource officers or have one officer for several different campuses. We need to f- still figure this out. We can't walk away from this because we as the way that we do our schools have rounded up the kids and put them completely undefensed and God bless our teachers and administrators who do their best to defend their, these kids, but they're not, you know, they're not armed. We, we round up these kids and we put them in a box and we've built this perfect little defenseless group for a really bad person to go and harm. And our state legislators put in the budget that, they're going to have a ton of people defending them. That they're going to be protected. But we still have not protected our schools. And we need to find a solution to that. And I really think that it comes down to building an infrastructure where we have a training place for teachers, where we have a curriculum for teachers. And we don't assign teachers to carry. We don't say, okay, Jim, you're coaching football and you're being the guy carrying the gun in school. But teachers who you, who carry on their own outside of work should be able to carry at work. It's not an armed teachers teachers issue. It's a right to carry ish, issue. Yeah, we don't we don't uh, dictate who carries. We don't give them a bump in pay for carrying because have you, have you ever seen a team that's coached by someone who's doing it for the stipend, and then a uh, a team that's coached by someone who's passionate about it? You can see the difference there. So we don't want people carrying because of the extra stipend. So we don't want a bump in pay. We just want people to have the right to carry. If they're qualified, if they've passed the curriculum, and and they're willing to requalify on a frequent basis, we have a caller. Uh, caller, you're on the air on KLIX. Go ahead. All right, uh, we'll try uh, the next line. Caller, you're up next. You're on the air on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News 1310.com. Good morning, guys. Great show. I don't know if anybody uh, on Face the Nation last Sunday there was the father of one of the school victims and his beautiful daughter, and I. Man, I didn't know if people watch it. I think we've lost his call. And he said that guns are not it. We've got to protect our schools. we got to get some in the schools, and this goes on every, every time. What are we going to do? Let's go for the guns. They don't look at the schools. It's the schools, guys, and 
Thanks for your great show. See ya. Hard target. Make it a hard target. I think it's essentially getting way of getting rid of the gun-free zones. Again, I've, I've stated it before, and I'll state it again. Gun-free zones are nothing but state and federally mandated killing fields. I mean, that's, you see that in the amount of school shootings and the, the amount of death and, and everything that happens during them. And it's just like just like Forrest said, you, I don't want to pile all this responsibility on teachers of security and stuff because they, they have enough on their plate. they got a lot going on. But the ones that carry in their off time, the ones that believe in that in their private time, they should just allow them to carry at work. And if you want to offer some kind of training and, or figure something out, I'm sure that they would be, someone who's passionate about it, would be more than happy to go and take that training. They would, see, I think, to a certain extent, I mean, you could mandate it, yes, but I think a lot of them, to be honest with you, I think they would seek that out on their own. And but, I think the training people, the, the training community would fill in the gaps. Yeah, and I think, you know, if you had a mandated curriculum, right. you said, you know, this is, what, you know, and some pretty rigorous um, firearms training, and then a certain set of standards of engagement, you know, so there's no confusion about, oh, well, I thought we could shoot in this instance. You spell it out black and white. We have some really intelligent people in this state who could put that together. We have some great trainers in this state. We have some great schools. You could put that all together where people could go, and like I said, if they wanted to, they could take it. You don't mandate teachers carry. Right. But they should be able to. Well, and I don't think any of us here, and just I'm just going to clear this up because I'm pretty sure we understand this in this room, but I want to make sure the listeners get it. We aren't saying that the ones that you know allow them to carry at school and they should run out and they should track down the, the active shooter and they should take him out. That teacher still should not leave those students. That teacher needs to protect those students. And if they can get them out with a firearm safely, they need to do so. If that means hiding in the classroom with the door locked and the firearm at ready so an active shooter kicks open that door, they can defend the students, then that's what needs to happen. We have a short break. We've got more coming up with Forrest Anderson, Todd Eccles, and uh, Bill Colley on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News 1310.com. 46 right now, and we're 20 minutes from 10 o'clock. Got about uh, 15 minutes to go. Uh, we're talking firearms this morning on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com with Todd Eccles from Patriot Defense, Forrest Anderson from Washington Street Pond, and Bill Colley answering the telephones. Our telephone number is 208 736 0300. And we have a caller with us. Caller, you're up next. You're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, I just watched this movie um, on Netflix called The Substitute with Tom Berenger. And uh, they had a New York school with the chain link fences and metal detectors and everything already back in the 70s or 80s. Yeah, some of your big city schools, I'm told. A friend of mine who actually grew up, I think, in Brooklyn told me that his school, uh, when he was a kid there in the 60s and 70s, was like an, an armed encampment. Uh, you know, you could not get in or out without uh, a lot of security going on. So it's nothing new. And I, it should be interesting to note that you notice these shooters don't go to those schools. Yeah. I don't they, wanna... they go to the schools where where they know they're not mm-hmm. going to face any resistance, and that's all. I think I think that's the point. If teachers that carry on in overtime are allowed to carry in school, no longer do these guys know who's carrying and who's not. I need. So to they're going to go out. pick a different target. I don't want to make this political, but a friend of mine, the two of my friends this morning, said that they had canceled their Netflix subscriptions because. They're unhappy about the latest Netflix producer, used to be president of the United States. Uh, so you, nothing today is, you know, it's all got to be political. Uh, so if you like something on Netflix, watch it before Mr. Obama starts producing TV shows there. Uh, Here, I here's, what I would, here's what I would say to that, is have an open mind. Yeah. Even if you don't agree with the view, yeah. that's why this country is founded, right. so people can have different opinions than yours. The watch, reason- watch something else. Would you want to, and you know, the people, the sellers that came here differed from the opinions of their government in Europe. That's why they came here because they wanted freedom. Yeah. So it's okay for us to have different opinions. It's okay to educate yourself to what the other side's thinking. Doesn't mean you have to agree with it. But although there are no more episodes of Longmire, so maybe it does make sense. <laughs> Get rid of it, man. There's nothing on Netflix anyway. I've been I've been clicking through it for two weeks looking for something. I think I've watched every episode of The Office five times. There you go. That's not a bad way to spend your time. No. How, by the way, does Sheriff Longmire, I mean, he he lives in a small county uh, uh, without a huge population, in fictional character, of course, folks, we know that, uh, but small county somewhere in the north the central part of Wyoming, and uh, remember, there was like a homicide every week in that small county. Do you think that perhaps 
there's a bigger problem there than just. Uh... I'm pretty sure it's because he shot and carried in 1911. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you, on that same note, here's something to think about. Yeah, I don't know if I, I don't want to date myself, but my mom used to love a show called Murder She Wrote. Oh. Uh-huh. Every time that lady would go to a town, somebody would get killed. I'll tell you what. They could have solved that whole deal earlier. Lock, lock if, someone, if somebody would have just taken her out week one, yeah. nobody gets murdered anymore. <laughs> if she, if she, What was her name again? They called, I, uh, I forget now. You know how long ago that was for? I'll you tell you what. If she showed up in my town, I'm going on vacation because every town she'd go to, <laughs> someone would get dies. killed. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there was a British actress who played that role. If they would have just taken her out week one, no more show. It's like a ton of the movies I watched. I'm like, man, we could have made this movie a five minute movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have a we have a, a quick note. That's 9:46, and we're at uh, 45. Uh, and joining us in studio are Forrest Anderson from Washington Street Pond, Todd Eccles from Patriot Defense. Telephone number is two zero eight seven three six zero three hundred. Caller, you're on KLIX. Go ahead. Angelo Lansbury. Oh, Lansbury. there you go. Right there. <laughs> I remember my mom used to make me sit down and watch that damn show, and I hated that lady. I never hated anything in my life. <laughs> I hated her as much as I hated that mangy old dog that would crap on our lawn every day. Yeah. <laughs> but you remember. But you remembered her name. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, we we, we I, it, he says his mother watched the show, and that was the audience. It's a little bit like the audience for Matlack. They were a lot older than I was. Uh, we have a we have another caller looking to join us. Caller, you're up next, and you're on the air. Go ahead. How are you doing today? Fabulous. Hey, uh, you made the comment, "What's our society coming to?" Um, until we solve those problems, we're going to have the gun problem. I mean, if as a person that's been, as I call, violated, somebody break into your house and steal things, and then. Basically, law enforcement can't do anything or won't do anything, and repeat offenders keep coming back. The society's frustrated. They've had it up to their eyeballs with what's going on. I can agree with that, and I've been there myself. I've had stuff stolen from me. But I think what we need to do is um, becoming one of the many that don't care about anyone else, that have no moral compass, isn't the solution. Now, you should be able to defend your home and your family and and your property. You know, if somebody's on your property, you you should be able to go confront them and, and say, hey, what are you doing here? And if they make an aggressive move to try to, to harm you or your family, you should absolutely be able to use lethal force. However, let's say you came home and you walked in your living room and a 14-year-old kid was running out the other door with your television. Would killing that 14-year-old kid, or let's say it's an adult, killing them for a television, and that's where Bill was referencing, well, what if it was a really expensive television? Yeah. You know, at what dollar amount do we justify taking another human's life? And I think that's what we really need to think about is, yes, we should be able to defend ourselves. We should be able to defend our property if someone's aggressive. But is killing someone over a television or a DVD player, is that really the society we want to live in? And I'd like to add, by the way, for anybody who may know where I live, uh, in a one-block radius, we have one trooper and uh, two city police officers in my neighborhood. So and two crazy cats, I think. Yeah, <laughs> they're they're worse than the. Uh, they'd actually help you pack the truck if you were robbing the place. <laughs> uh, we have another caller with us. Caller, you're up next at nine forty nine on KLIX. Good morning. Good morning. Um, if you want to see what a an unarmed and unprotected civil you know people or society looks like, just look south. Look to Mexico. And look and see what happened when they gave up their guns and civilian and the people can't defend themselves. Look at what's happened to their society. Well, in five years ago, Venezuela five years ago said, turn them in or yeah. else. Yeah. And they found out what else meant. It was interesting. I just got back from Mexico and I was talking to my cab driver. And I forget what we were talking about, but he said almost every home in Mexico has a gun. It's just illegal. But I'll tell you who has guns for sure. All the bad guys have guns. Yep. They all do. Despite it being against the law, all the bad guys are still armed. So, yeah, passing laws is not going to take guns out of the hand of bad guys because they shouldn't have them anyway, and they already have them. We have another caller. Caller, you're up next. You're on the air on News Radio 1310 KLIX. Go ahead. Good morning, gentlemen. It, you know, if people really want to get uh, be a solution, uh, be part of the solution to this problem, they need to go to their school board meetings and they need to ask the school board what. The plan is to defend their children beyond a black and white sign at the edge of the school property. 
we we have schools now that we put out in the middle of uh, on the on the outskirts of town. Mm-hmm. You know, what's the response time from Twin Falls PD out to those schools? What's the response time out into the county for some of these some of these areas? I mean, it, yeah, you know, if it's if it's six or seven minutes, look at the Florida shooting. That thing was over in six to seven minutes with seventeen people dead. So we need to we need our we need to hold our school boards responsible for our, the lives of our children. And if they're not going to do it, they need to allow like Todd and Force that they need to allow us to do it. I know Todd and I went to our kids' school board and here a couple of years ago, and, and we're trying to get we have a reserve deputy on staff at our school, and he's not even allowed to carry there while he's working. And I will say um, that you know he the caller was right, and in Idaho right now, the state of Idaho is covered by a federal blanket law. All the K through 12 schools are. If you want to try to institute concealed carry or something in your school, all you have to do is get enough of you, you know, that are under the same mindset, go and present that to your school board. Convince your, your, your school board as to why you want this or why you need this. And if they pass it, they will have a vote. And if they pass it, they can come up with whatever restrictions they want to come up with, and they write that into their bylaws. Once they do that, you are then covered and you can carry under their restrictions or whatever they set up. It's, it's really that easy. I was going to say, though, uh, Canyon Ridge High School, with the growth we're having, will soon be in the center of the city. Um, we have another caller with us. Caller, you're up next. You're on the air on, uh, on News Radio 1310 KLIX. Yeah, you were asking about the gun shows a little earlier. There's one not this weekend, but next weekend. I believe the 17th and 18th in Burley, not Buell. Okay. Burley. 17th and 18th in Burley. Can you give us a location? Nope. At least that's close enough, I guess. Um, <laughs> We have another caller. Caller, you're next. You're on the air. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I feel like Ron Meyer. Try Wind River. Wind, Wind River. I'll, yes. look, I'll look that up this weekend. All right. Uh, I want to thank him for the call. We'll squeeze another caller in here. Uh, caller, you're next. You're on the air on Top Story. Bill, we should talk more about the people that are wounded. The people that are dead, their suffering is over. But some of the people that are wounded, they're going to be crippled and in pain for the rest of their lives. I want to thank him for the call. Uh, hey, we've got about uh, five minutes to go. We should probably review your contact information and any news you guys have coming up. Uh, Washington Street Pawn, um, come down and see us. We, uh, we've sold a lot of guns. The uh, counter's a little bit thin. We still have a real, lot of really cool stuff in there, though. Like I said, we have um, 20 AR-15s coming in today. Twelve of them have already been sold, but we got eight or ten. They're going to be 589 bucks. Um, don't get caught in a panic. Don't pay too much. Um, guns will come available. I remember last time that this happened around the election, everybody panicked and paid too much, and then they were rubbing their wounds afterwards. So don't get caught in that. Um, stop in, see us. We've got a really cool class coming up May 12th. It's $200. It'll be down at Shaw Shooting. You'll go through between 750 and 1,000 rounds that day. So you're going to get some trigger time. It's going to be a handgun class. Um, we're going to take you through all the stuff that the uh, world's best shoot when they come and train there and uh, give you kind of a flavor of what those guys get to train on. Uh, my next uh, my next actually uh, permit class is actually going to be on April 7th. I'm just now uh, just announced that today. So I've got plenty of spots left. If you're interested in that or you have questions, uh, give me a call, shoot me a text at area code 620-794-6223. That's area code 620-794-6223. I have that, uh, um, the uh, active shooter teacher's class I'm doing for free tomorrow. So hopefully by the next show, I'll have a report on how that went. I believe KMVT is even coming out to that. So that'll be, that'll be interesting. Um, I do do a podcast. It's called the Patriot Defense Podcast. Under It's on Spotify. It's on iTunes. Look it up. Share it with your friends. Subscribe to it. Take a listen. Um, that actually started to gain traction. I'm getting some random people get a hold of me and message me on Facebook. Say, hey, man, I, I found this. I've, I've looked up Concealed Carry. Your podcast popped up. We really enjoy it. Um, I like those messages, so share it with all your friends. And uh, I've got a little thing that, that, that tells me where people have listened at. I'm now in Mexico. Patriot Defense Podcast is now in Mexico. So there we go. Hey, I've got a quick note uh, from a veteran I know. He says, not to ding law enforcement, uh, but uh, he said, I've never lived in a place where the police got there in under 45 minutes. And I've seen a lot of criminals who still get off on some technicality. I think experience like that uh, makes the common man have a shoot-first attitude at home. I I have to note, though, like I've had to call the police to my shop a few times, like, and they're always Johnny on the spot. But they can't be everywhere. Like I said, you 
they can't, you know, if they're on one side of the county, they can't beam to the other side of the county. They right. have to drive there. Um, and as far as the charges getting dropped, that's where it comes to the district attorney. Because the police officers, I know they get frustrated too. They arrest people, they give all the evidence, and then the next week they see the prosecuting attorney kick the guy loose on some, you know, the guy says, well, I'll give you the name of somebody else or or I'll give the stuff back, and then they don't charge him. So that's not on the police officers. Police officers do their best, especially in this area. Our guys do a great I mean, job. They, they do what they can. I mean, we are stretched so thin. I mean, especially if you don't live in the city, you live in the right. county. I mean, that's... I mean, I've, if you're I've, in Lincoln County, for instance, or, or anywhere. I mean, yeah. I lived, I live in Twin Falls County, but I live out, you know, out in Beulah, out in the county. And it depends on where that officer is. I mean, he could, he could still be over by Twin Falls. He could be out by Hollister. It's going to take him some time to get where he needs to be. Got about a minute left. We'll squeeze one last caller in. Caller, it has to be quick, but go ahead. Hey, our school board members, uh, can can we go to that class? Uh, yes, you can. Just uh, give me a call or, or shoot me a text message, and uh, I'll get you on the list. And I give you my number, uh, 620-794-6223. And I think... Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the caller. And I think it should be noted that, you know, if... Let's get this dialogue going. You know, let's not be open. Don't... Our school board members have a lot of responsibility to be responsible for making good decisions for our kids. So the fact that they don't just jump in and start throwing guns around the school and saying, everybody carry, you know, that's that's why we voted for them, because they make... Hopefully make good decisions. So... But let's open up the conversation. Let's talk about it. Let's find a scenario where it works for everybody, where our kids can be safe and the school can be safe. And, and they're not going to do it and unless you are concerned and you go in front of them and you present your case and you are rational about it. You can't go in there going, everyone should carry. We should bring guns in this place. You guys are crazy. You guys are this. That's not a way to start a conversation. you got to be rational uh, You got rational about it. you got to be educated about it and go in there and, and, and state, state the facts. We want to thank both uh, Todd and Forrest for coming by today. And, uh, you know, the thing is, I had a stack of stuff about guns here that we were going to talk about, and we got so busy, we didn't even get to a lot of it. So um, Next week. Next week. That's why we keep doing it every week. In the meantime, uh, God willing, at the Creek Don't Rise, I'll be back here Monday morning on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Rush Limbaugh's program is up next following the news from Fox at 10 o'clock.